Like many people, I like to keep my dogs in a crate when I am not home, when I go to work. It keeps them out of trouble, keeps them from getting into things, keeps them from making messes, all those good things. And when I got my new house, I was thinking, I didn't want a crate on the, the floor somewhere or I'd stub my toe on it. So in my house, I had one of those little Harry Potter rooms, you know, under the stairs. And I uh, thought, that might be a good place to uh, put the dogs. So this is what I've come up with. But first, what, what's that? Subscribe? Whoa! I want to say a special thank you to my girlfriend, Lazy Llama. You'll see it in the description for getting me this awesome shirt to help promote the channel. So before I show you what the cage looks like now, because I did build this almost a year ago, uh, it it's had some wear and tear. So I, I'm going to show some pictures and kind of talk about what I was trying to do going into this and some of the fears that I had and what might happen, what ended up did happening. It, yes. So originally the plan was to have two separate dog cages uh, with each their own door and a divider down the middle that I could move over um, for cleaning and ease of access because I'd rather go through the big door than the small door and just makes things a little bit easier and that way the dogs can still kind of be with each other but be separated at the same time helps them um, deal with being alone during the day I, I know that I wanted to have a, a light on the inside uh, so that way they're not always in the dark but I could still turn it off from the outside and I noticed when I was building it that it got kind of hot on the inside and so what I did to combat that was I mounted a, a small fan up on the wall to kind of help keep the air circulating, keep it moving, keep it cool and so far that's worked wonderful. I will say the style of light that I used ended up not working for me um, and I'll, I'll get into that later and show you what I end up going with now. So let me just go ahead and get into this and I'll tell you the problems that I come across them. So I will go over this quickly. This side is Moose, this side is Mandy. I'm sure you will see them at some point in the video. And over here is their water bowls uh, because they go through a lot of water and they both eat in their cages. We, we keep them separate. They've never had any issues, but it just gives them time to sit in a, and digest and get through all their food. And we keep their food over here. So we just put the kibble into the bowls, add a little bit of water, mix it up, and uh, let them eat in their cages. But on the doors, they have little locks that allow them to open. And they each have two locks. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Mandy. Yeah, I'm showing off your cage. She got the wiggles. Hi. So this is Mandy's cage, and she goes in here, the small one, because she is the little one. And Moose goes inside his cage. See, he knows where his cage is. This is Moose. He is our Great Dane mix. And this is Mandy. She is a boxer. Say hi, Mandy. Hi, Goose. But one of the first problems I came across, as you can see, they have chewed on the wood of the door frame. And that's all the way around on the inside. You can't tell on the outside, and every bit of it is just as strong as the day I built it. And it's on both doors. They have chewed it all, chewed it all up. So that's something I need to uh, figure out what I want to do about that. Hi, Bo. Say good boy. Hi, <laughs> <I> man. <laughs> but on the inside. You can see all this looks like brick, but it's all made of wood. It's just wood paneling that I got from uh, one of the hardware stores in town. And this wall here is made out of old boards from pallets that I got for free 
and I just cut the boards up and put them in a pattern on the wall. And besides this all looking good, the idea was to keep the dogs from chewing through the drywall. Um, so I figured that might become a problem. And after a year, they chewed a little bit on the wood, but all the brickwork wood looks very good. I got the same wooden pallet boards over here. And like I said, this is all just under the stairs. And as you can see, after a while, I realized that I did not go up high enough with the, the uh, protective barrier to keep them from the drywall. And over here you see an outlet, because originally this was an outlet, and I toggled in a toggle switch. So now, on the inside, you can turn the lights off and on from the outside. So I took the power outlet that was here, ran it through the inside to a cord. And the cord goes up and around to a power box. And this is the light, it'll be hard to see. But it is just a desk lamp on a nail. And it's meant to hang on a nail. It has the little bracket. And it just kind of hangs here. And that's what I have now. Because originally I had lights that went round all the way. And the dogs, as you can see, can reach this high. They end up grabbing a hold of it and ripping it down. So I was like, that's not a good idea. So I took it out and put in this light instead. And also, with this power box, I have a fan. It's just the same little deal, a little clamp fan, hanging on a nail. And another thing, there was a hole here in the drywall, right where Moose could reach, and he took out a large section of the drywall. And I knew this was gonna be a problem, is not on this wall because over here this is sheet metal I think it's from uh, supposed to be for like duct work and I took it and cut it up with some scrap board here to just kind of cover everything up and no matter how much he bangs and beats on this he cannot get through it and not tear up anything and all the edges have been smoothed down so there's nowhere he can cut himself he, he's keeping fine and yet he's still reaching over the top of it just a little bit so I know I need to go up at least another six or eight inches up over the top to keep him from getting to it just about everywhere around so like I said I wanted a divider between the two cages so that would be Mandy's side. Hey Mandy! Mandy! He says hi. Hey Mandy. This is her side of the cage. And this is Moose's. And this is nice and solid. It bends a little bit, but doesn't go nowhere. And all the edges at the top, when I trimmed the metal, were nice and smooth. But at the same time, if I ever need to clean, I can come to here, which are some nice little gate latches. And just mount it to this 2x4 here. And so I can take this one off at the top, take this one off at the bottom, and because I have these mounted with some pipe uh, brackets, it allows this whole thing to move. And now I can tuck it flat up against the wall, and I have unrestricted access all the way through to both sides. And what's nice is since this moves freely, when it's time to close, all you gotta do is push, and it locks in at the bottom, and locks in at the top. And it's soft. So, with all that, I think it's time for this entire enclosure to have a nice, deep clean, so I can come up with a plan for next week's DIY video where I go through and address some of the changes and updates that it needs and give the whole thing a fresh coat of paint. So let's get into cleaning the dog cage.
Okay, so that's going to cover just about everything for today's video with the dog cage. I hope that kind of gave you some ideas if you're trying to build one for yourself, for your dogs. I will be going over more of the construction on how I built it in next week's video, um, along with some of the um, upgrades and changes and stuff that I need to make, uh, along with a fresh coat of paint, like I said. So if you want to see part two to this video, make sure you like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for the next one. So with that, have a good day. Have a good one.